Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So for the past few years, one of the most popular genres on Steam has been the shop simulator genre. It is something that people really love, so these sell millions of copies, they make millions of dollars. For example, last year, two really big hits were Supermarket Simulator that made $27 million and TCG Card Shop Simulator that made $20 million. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is what I publish every single Sunday with any weekly news and interesting Game Dev articles that I come across every week. Go ahead and sign up with the link in the description. So yep, last year, two of the big hits were indeed these two games. So this genre is super hot. And at the same time, actually, it's a very achievable genre by indie devs. I believe these two games, those were either completely solo devs or mostly solo devs. So that's insane. Imagine being a solo dev and making this much money by yourself. And people do love these games. So these all have very positive reviews. So Supermarket Simulator, this is one of the big hits. Then, of course, the TCG Card Shop Simulator, another one. This one is overwhelmingly positive. So people really love this. And, of course, you've got tons more games just like this. For the most part, these shop simulator games are basically you just have a character, you look around, and you interact with objects. For the most part, that's pretty much 90% of the gameplay. Another one that was a huge hit quite a long time ago was House Flipper. This one came out in 2018 and also found massive success, and again, with very, very positive reviews. Another one is Gas Station Simulator, where you manage some kind of gas station. So that's another thing about these games, how the names are usually not very inventive. They are very straightforward, very to the point. You also got the fast food simulator, another one, overwhelmingly positive, and people really love this one. And again, pretty much the same gameplay. This time, you run some kind of fast food chain. You've got Contraband Police, so this is another one that is on a pretty much the same genre, except this one takes the theme a little bit more further. So it's a little bit more complex, but still roughly the same genre. And again, very positive, people love it. Or perhaps the Storage Hunter Simulator. I believe there are quite a lot of shows that are very popular based on this genre, and someone made a game on it, and it seems people really like it. And again, same thing. It's very much one of those games. It's a similar game. You walk around, you interact with objects and do all kinds of interesting actions. So as you can see, most of these games are insanely successful. Obviously, there are some that don't find success. It is not necessarily a guaranteed sort of thing. But within the current, let's say the Steam meta, this is definitely one of the best genres if you want to make a game that you want to find success. So for example, if right now I was going to make some kind of new game, I was looking for some kind of new idea, and I specifically want that game to make sure that it finds quite a lot of success, specifically some financial success, some copies and so on. If I wanted that, then I would probably try doing this genre. Because again, it's a very hot genre on scene, and it's also a genre that is relatively easy to make. Like I said, these games are really just all about interactions. All you really have is just a first person or third person character controller. You'll look around and you interact with various items. So these games are pretty much 90% the same. All of them share those same commonalities. You'll look around, interact with items, and that's really it. So then the difference between these games is really just the theme that you apply on top of it. So if you make a game that is pretty much 90% the same, 90% just like these shops and other games, but then you apply a different theme on top of it, like all of these games, those are all different themes. If you do that, that is usually enough to get players to really love your game. Players don't worry, really like this nice core gameplay, look around, interact with things, do that. So all you really need to do is just be original for that last 5-10%, to 10 and all of a sudden you have something that has quite nice odds of actually finding some very good success. Personally, I do like playing these games. This is a genre that I find quite fun. And I've long wanted to try making one of those myself because, like I said, it's relatively simple, relatively straightforward. And that's exactly kind of what exactly I just did. So here is a basic shop simulator game that I made in, I think, about 5 to 10 hours, something like that. Again, like I said, these games are very simple. You just have some kind of first-person controller. I can move around, I can look around. Then there are some objects. And as I approach those objects, I can take all kinds of actions. So over here, I can pick up some kind of box. Then I can approach all of these shelves, I can look at the shelves, and I can stock those shelves, add a bunch of things, and here they go. All of a sudden, I'm stocking some kind of blue box, something like that. I can drop this box, I can pick up another one, then go ahead, stock some more shelves. And yep, then I've got these little capsules, these are meant to be people. So they just come around, they go into my store, they look up on these shelves, they try to find something they want, and when they do, they come over here to this checkout. And once again, just another interaction. I just look at the item, I scan the item, and there you go. I make some money, I have some happy customers. They go away, more people come in, and I make a bunch more money. So yep, this is the core gameplay loop. This is really a really great starting point. I already have quite a lot of mechanics of that genre over here. Like I said, that genre is really 90% exactly the same. And then you just have to apply a theme on top of it. So right now, all of this is really great just because I didn't use any kind of visuals. But you can imagine how just by adding these different visuals on top of it, by adding like different items over here on these boxes instead of being just random objects, random items. Instead of that, if you make something that is proper, like some kind of, let's say, car parts, let's say game parts, in order to simulate some kind of car store, some kind of game store, something like that, just modify those items, add some visuals, and all of a sudden you have a real nice prototype of, once again, a very valuable, very profitable genre. So this prototype over here, this thing that I built, I actually made this intentionally for my CodeMonkey token asset. 
So this is a really awesome collection of 40 tools and elements to help you make games better and faster. I really included a ton of tools inside the toolkit, so lots of things to help you do all kinds of things. And basically, in order to validate these tools, in order to validate that they are generally useful, in order to do that, basically, I wanted to make a prototype myself. And again, when thinking about a prototype, I basically just went to the genre that I've wanted to make for quite some time, make a shop simulator prototype. And if that's exactly what I did, and by using the toolkit, that is how I was able to make this so quickly. I basically just drag and drop the first person controller, very easy to get it started. And then, like I said, these games are pretty much all about the interaction system. So I really just use the interaction system, including the toolkit. Then I use a bunch more tools over here. Once again, the main goal and why I did this was actually to validate that these tools work. So I tried to use as many tools as possible. So I've used, for example, the error detector window. That one is really easy to use. Then for spawning the characters, I use the function timer tool. Then for all of these items, in order to make them look towards the camera, I use the look at the camera tool. Then for stocking all of those positions within the shelves, those are using a grid system. Then for setting the prices, over here I can modify them. Yep, it's a nice input window. Then for the players themselves, for the customers, as soon as they go, I can see a nice little text pop up. So that's another nice window. Over there, the chat bubble, also another tool. So basically, this genre that I really wanted to make for a long time. Right now, I basically just use this toolkit as an excuse to use it. And it actually ended up looking really great. So the final game actually does work exactly as I wanted to. So it does have a functional, let's say, shop simulator prototype and did serve to achieve my original goal of validating all these tools that all of them work. Initially, I was also only going to make this for myself, like I said, just to test out the tools. But then I figured if I'm going to make it, if I'm going to be using the tools, I might as well just include it in the toolkit. That way other people can see this as kind of a demo of practical ways to use all the various tools within a bigger project. So yep, I decided to include it. This is over there in the toolkit. So if you pick it up, you get access to this nice shop simulator prototype. And again, you can take this as a base, expand upon it. Like I said, these games are 90% the same and then only 10% some kind of skin attached on top of it. So yep, you can definitely take this as a starting point, apply some nice visuals on top of it, apply some interesting items. Like I said, something like perhaps a mechanic store, perhaps a game store, perhaps an electronic store, or perhaps a grocery store, a trading card store. You should probably do something a bit more unique, but like I said, you can apply that 10%, that little skin, you can apply that on top of it, and very quickly you can make a prototype in this genre that is, once again, the most valuable genre right now. So yep, if you're looking for some ideas for your next game to make, then maybe go ahead and try making this genre. If you intentionally want your next game to be very successful from a financial standpoint, then yep, I do think this genre is great. And if you yourself like the genre, like personally, I do enjoy this genre, then so, it's just a win-win. You enjoy making this genre, and chances are it will increase your odds of finding success. So yep, check out my toolkit if you want something to help you get started. The new release discount is still active for just a few more days, and over time I will be updating the toolkit with more tools and elements, and as I do that I will be increasing the base price. So basically right now is the cheapest it will ever be. And again, it includes the Shop Simulator prototype, you can take this as a base and expand upon it and make a game in this really awesome, really profitable genre. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.